Hello and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that bit of footage there we've just seen. I shot that a couple of weeks ago when I was putting the Bobo Electric away and a few of those illuminated coaches back into its box. Left a few of them on the railway. I thought I might have used the, the footage last week but I, I couldn't quite get it into the video. But uh, I thought we'd enjoy it at the start of this video. So this, this week it's going to be a little bit odd. We're going to have a look at a number of things. Um, this is bank holiday weekend and uh, the lockdown sort of has been over for, I don't know, three weeks I've been back at work. So it's been uh, very, oh sorry, I've been very short of time. Haven't had a great deal of time with the railway. However, I have made a number of purchases this last week and they've arrived. So I, I thought we might have a look at those. But uh, also we're gonna have a look at uh, the, this diesel shunter or more correctly, the, uh, the one that's in the box over there and a little bit of um, slow running. Not uh, that I'm getting into slow running in a big way, it's just that uh, Mr. Snooze has, has just released a video, well, as I make this, or two videos this week, and uh, done some quite interesting work with his set of controllers. And I, I watched uh, his videos, caught up with them both at the same time. I was quite uh, uh, taken by them. And I, I got out, if you see the insert picture, I got out a number of controllers that I have um, and tried them against the ones I currently have on the railway. I got a couple of RP14s and tried the, one of the train set controllers there and the, uh, the P5. But um, as, as you'll see, if you see Mr. Snooze's video, I'll, I'll leave it in, in the links that the, the, uh, the clipper really is a, a bit of a bit of a star. It is such a great controller and it is center off, which really reminds me how much I miss it. Uh, but we'll, we'll look at a little slow running with a, with a couple of models, not too scientific. Um, the back edge of the railway is approximately eight feet. I'll, I'll point out where that rough eight foot marker is a little later on. But I thought we'd just have a look at this as well, which I found quite interesting. I had a, a bad joint in one of these pieces of track that I had to solve earlier in the week. And um, there's some unusual running going on here. There's, there's an isolating section. And I couldn't understand why this diesel shunter, it's not the, the smoothest it's the one I use for trap cleaning. It's um, been around a bit, but listen to this when you push it. That's sort of relatively smooth, but listen what happens on this piece of track. It's uh, it certainly, uh, the wheel flanges certainly get down to this uh, molding on the, on the track bed here. So there's quite pronounced uh, sleeper chairs on this particular piece of track. And so far I've looked around the railway and can't find any others which are quite like that. Um, although this is a late 60s, early 70s, the flanges aren't too bad. Um, it's not like that comfortable on some of the point work. It does struggle a little, but um, let's put this over here and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at the items that I've uh, received in the post. There's uh, one eBay purchase and two parcels, one from Elaine's Trains and uh, one from Dave Angel. So here's the, the first of the items. I've partially got it out of the box because I'm going to struggle one-handed here. I've decided to try and shoot this um, handheld on the gimbal. I'm not sure how well that's going to work out. So I've been after one of these for quite some time. I've got a couple of B12s already, but this one in the, uh, the BR Black um, from the uh, mid-70s, and it's uh, R150, which I think is the original number for the uh, the B12, the black B12. But uh, this one's got uh, instructions dated 77. We just see it there. Let me just see if I can uh, encourage this one out of the box. So I've been outbid many times since I've been uh, looking for one of these. And th this one showed up last week on eBay as a buy it now to round about the figure that um, I've been losing out at. So I thought I would just uh, buy it now as they say so I'm quite pleased with it instructions there we've got uh, R150 what the date we've got I always read these wrong is that 26th of the first 77 so uh, forgive me if I've read that incorrectly it's in lovely condition I'm not going to get it out of the polystyrene quite uh, at the moment it's um, matte black it's a lovely looking thing it does run but uh, it, it needs a little bit of attention, just just servicing, really, just just a, a light clean and lubrication. It's, the motor's very dry, so we'll definitely be seeing that in the coming weeks. Very very pleased with that model, and uh, it does have uh, instructions here for zero one. I think these must have been put in the box 
um, at a later date because I think this model of 77 was uh, is pre-01 but uh, again always nice to have these extra pieces of paper so we'll pop that down I think this model was only available 77 78 let's just put that away nice and carefully and uh, as I said earlier I think uh, the box is in really tidy condition so I was very pleased with that now I've got two uh, brown cardboard boxes full of items excuse me shuffling around here on the floor so th this came from Dave Angel um, again these are uh, I paid for these the, this isn't an advertorial it's just people quite often ask me where I get things from and I, I frequently buy things from Danger Dave Angel and Elaine's Trains which is the next box down from this so I bought a number of items. Um, so one of these bridges, um, I can't remember the, the, the number of this one at all, but I already have one of those. I have, have a plan for, the, for these. I'm, I might be able to get them around on the edge of the railway. So we'll just pop that to one side. And then there's a, a viaduct here, which is uh, three of those bridges. It's the early one. This is a, a Triang Railways one. R180, it's handy having the numbers on the box. Again, a lovely condition box. Let's see if I can encourage that out of the box one handed. If I can't, we'll, uh, we'll just cut to another bit. There we go. So, again, it's a, quite a nice item. And strange, I didn't have one of these. So, uh, it's uh, really nice to get one in the collection. You can see the, the later one that I just had there. They've, the, the models evolved slightly. The top sections have been molded in a different color plastic. I'm not sure whether this is still in Hornby's current range or I'll have to have a look. So again, I was quite pleased to get that. So we'll pop that down to one side. Very eclectic um, collection of uh, items from different eras here, I think. And this is a, a box of catenary. I'm not sure whether it's in its original condition, but it, it's quite a nice set, R4-16. So it's a 15 foot catenary set. So we'll just open that. So it doesn't have any instructions with it. It's in fairly tidy condition. The, the masts don't look too worn. So I think there's 17 or 18 masts there. Interestingly, the, uh, the power mast is missing from this set, but it's got these nice, uh, packets still in their original cellophane so you can hear how crinkly that is and there's a power power mass base in that one so if we have a look in the uh, this packet here i don't seem to see a power mass base in this one it just says mass bases on the on the top card of both of them it doesn't differentiate between the two so we'll just pop those down there for a second you can see the uh, the wires there all look to be in, in very nice condition. So I don't think these are, are steel. I think I've said before, I think there might be, a, a, some of these may have been used as, may have been nickel in the past. They've got uh, some horrible brown tape on there and they've got their little uh, wire clips on the end. I think originally those would have been in a little cellophane wrapper as well. So I think the items largely have been used. And I can't work out whether this is uh, white paint on those or whether that's sticky it is quite sticky actually or whether that's sticky from being underneath that little bit of tape there which i think they would have orig originally come from the store in but the, there should be some uh, a piece of paperwork to go with those i think we've seen the paperwork before i do have have some copies but uh, i was quite pleased to get that and it's, it's nice having these uh, these items in their bags they're, they're very very pretty things but uh, always good to have some additional catenary. So we'll pop that to one side. And you can see I've got some track in the bottom of the box. And then this item here is quite pleasing to get. And that's a, another Gerda Bridge Plus Supports R78C. Uh, but this version, I don't think there's a price on the box. Let's see if I can hold it around. No. Gray cardboard on the bottom, and you can see where the tape's been. Let's see if I can lift off the lid again see how we do one-handed with that so this version is um, the one meant for the Canadian market I think let's just take off the uh, the bubble wrap and there's the card well, not the cardboard the wooden wooden base you see it's been 
been together, you can see where the screws have been in the wood and the, the metal that affected the woodwork there. So is that even where some paint or something, maybe varnish or something has been on there at some point. You can see where the, the plastic work's been around the edges there. So the air, air or varnish or something has been at it, hasn't it? But uh, this is a brown one. Um, they made it for a short period of time, I think. It was like 69 to 70, 72 or something like that. Um, for a very short period of time, it's produced in uh, brown plastic. You can see this has definitely been on somebody's layout there. It's got uh, paint on it. It's not perfect, it's got some damage. I do only have one of the girders that go across the top. And then in the back here. So I've got one brown one and one uh, one grey one, and I think the brown one is sadly damaged, but uh, I'm sure we can do something about that. And I'm unsure about the paperwork, whether that's original, because that goes with uh, Trying Railways. This is a Trying Hornby box. And again, if uh, the paperwork was um, Trying Railways, this, this was made in the uh, late uh, late 60s, early 70s. So this, this paperwork may have been just found its way into the box. Um, at a later date, but uh, who knows? So we just pop that to one side. Pop that in there again. Very, very pleased to uh, to have one of those. So I'm not quite sure when or if we'll use it, but uh, that uh, wording there is not on a not on a sticky label. It's actually printed onto the white panel. So I don't know whether these boxes were made up and then the, the print was put on later for for different items, perhaps. So again, we'll pop that to one side. And I've got myself some uh, some additional track for my project for getting the uh, the turntable, that uh, slightly later turntable in. I'm gonna need some additional pieces of track. And uh, actually, I'm gonna have to replace some of the point work on the railway because I'm beginning to get some wear and tear. These, um, these little things there that look like screws are just like plastic plugs they run through and they're, they're beginning to, to break and pop out. Um, so I, I fixed a few by just atta attaching them with a bit of super glue at the bottom, but uh, I don't think it's a, it's a permanent fix. So I've got a handful of points, diamond crossings, and importantly here we have a steel Y point. So the Y point I've got on the uh, railway at the moment will not change with, um, or is very reluctant to change with just the one point motor. So it'll be interesting to see if we can swap that one out. But uh, great to get some more uh, steel track work, especially the point work. So hopefully we'll get some time to uh, put the uh, put the turntable in. So let's just have a look at the, uh, the box from Elaine. Uh, probably spent far too much this month. But uh, it's uh, ages since I bought anything. And uh, the joy of being able to go back to work again, I suppose, is, uh, made me uh, buy these things you could say but uh, as if I really need an excuse so I already had one of these this is the blue one I'm not sure whether I can get this out of the packet one-handed let's let's see but uh, I'd seen this on Elaine's site and uh, ignored it because I thought oh I have one of these and, uh, and idly one evening I was looking and noticed that it actually has the uh, the earlier motor with the uh, the metal brush caps on it and again I'm not going to manhandle this one out of the box at the moment one-handed we will have a look at them I'll have a look at it with the other class 47 I've got what are the other two class 47s I've got um, so it's an incremental change in design it has a, it's blue with the earlier bogies um, but it doesn't have six traction tires it just has um, just has three on one side I think still has pickups on that pick up on both ends but only on one side on one end I think I'm right in saying but uh, it's stunningly heavy so we'll, we'll put that to one side too so if anybody's bought from Elaine before they'll know that she she wraps things beautifully in um, in yellow tissue it was really nice to get these items so I, I have had all of these things out of the box but um, Dave wraps things beautifully as well usually uses newspaper all arrives really safely so uh, there, I've got another buffet car there. So I couldn't resist that one. It's in far better condition than the one I have. So again, I don't know the dates on these. This has got to be mid-late 70s, hasn't it? 
no, silver window surrounds and that uh, red line running across the top of the windows there. So we'll definitely be having that on the railway at some point. And then I've got a, a brake, LNER brake there, teak coach. So we'll get that out with the uh, the Flying Scotsman at some point soon. I think it's uh, it's time to have the uh, the Flying Scotsman out again. And I have put an LED lamp in the uh, glowing firebox to see if I can make it a, a little bit brighter. So in, in the uh, the dodgy old one made out of bits, but we'll, we'll get one of the nice ones out, I think. And then finally, in the box, we've got um, a vent van. So they're quite nice items. And uh, I've only got one other of these. This one's got all its doors, but sadly no box. But uh, I think uh, a couple of those are in order, really. They really are quite fine looking things. I think these are late 60s and ran possibly into the 80s. This is this has got uh, silver seal wheels, so we're thinking sort of probably mid mid 70s. So we're just marking out the the approximate eight feet along the back of the railway here. Now I've pinched the uh, formula from Mr. Snooze. I'll leave a link to his video, and you can see how he was measuring the scale speed of his uh, models. So we've got an approximate eight foot there, just before the points. So no laser beams or uh, proper timing watches here. So it's just going to be all visual. So. We've got the Lord of the Isles underway. I thought it would be quite good since we had a storming around the railway last week. So we've got a running on half wave and high resistance. Should go a fraction slower, but she really won't make it over that point she's just been over there if we go any slower than this. Here the motor is sort of really uh, working hard. It doesn't really like it, I don't think, at, uh, at this speed. And there we go, 29 point one four seconds that's uh, 14.2 miles an hour so here we have the uh, class 37 i've made an, an adapt adaption to the motor or a modification to the motor recently which i'll uh, go over in, in another video soon but i'm quite pleased with the uh, the running of this model now so we're, we're getting on now for eight feet there and see how we're going to do with this 25.29 seconds and we've got 16.4 miles per hour so I'm just going to let that run around the railway now so I have been uh, fiddling with the motors in these for quite some time and making odd adjustments to the way I'm supporting the bearings I've come up with a, a, a recent change to the, to the way I've been working on it so this is the first one I've tried I'm going to try the uh, class 31 um, shortly, see if it has the same uh, pronounced effect in its running. But I'm quite pleased with this. Again, this is um, half wave and uh, high resistance on the uh, on the clipper controller. So all of these are on the clippers. I know I showed a, a picture earlier with a, a variety of controllers, but if you look at Mr. Snooze's video, he does really cover the other controllers very well, and he's got some beautiful uh, Hornby Double controllers, which are, are lovely things to look at and really quite great results from them. So let's see how we do with the diamond crossing here. Not too bad. Well, that has a, an extra pickup on the bogey. This isn't the later model with the silver seal motor. I think that's a, a different sort of prospect altogether. So as we come round, we'll see if we can get another time from her as she comes back to the, uh, the measured eight feet. And we'll apply the formula again and, and see what sort of time we get. Yeah, quite a bit of vibration from the motor. A lot of that's uh, amplified by the rails. Um, we're just coming up to the uh, beginning of the eight foot mark. Remember, this is just all by eye. Timer ready. And there we go, we're, we're off and running. Over the points without a stutter at all. So they're not too heavy, but I think it does benefit to have something running with the trains when you're, when you're trying to measure the speed. They're, they're nicer to control with a, a little weight behind them. And there we go, just coming up on the, uh, the eight foot mark there. And we've got 26.9 seconds, that's 15.4 miles per hour. Not too bad, so we'll let that go around again. So. Hands are completely off the controller here with this running through here and all the time sections 
There's no, uh, there's no control on the controller from me. It's just letting it run. But I haven't touched the controller since we started this section with the, the Class 37, and she's just running around really quite nicely. And there's the, uh, the pannier tank there. I am going to have a, a little section of video with that just, to, just at the end. Lovely growl coming from that motor. There is still just a little play within the bearings, I think, which is uh, where that's coming from. It really does cope with that uh, diamond quite well. I think she's picking up a tiny bit of pace there, isn't she? Into the curve. Still haven't got the signals put in. I was hoping to get those done this bank holiday weekend, but I just haven't. So maybe, maybe soon. Evening Star looking terrific sitting there on the uh, on the flyover section. And again, over another set of points. And just approaching the measured eight foot section, the beginning on beginning of it, sorry, losing my speech timer on there. I'm not sure whether she's running a little quicker here than the previous run. And I, I have conveniently forgotten the time of the previous run already. Short memory. Yeah, I think it feels quicker. 18.7, yeah, I think that was quicker. Excuse me if I, I've got that wrong. But uh, I've just thought we might be able to get this slower, so I've brought that back around so that she's all warmed up but I've really got the controller cranked right down now. And here there is qu quite a lot of uh, noise coming from that motor again. Now this, this clipper is, is a far superior controller, I think, than the, the, uh, the Hornby's power controller units that I've, that I've currently got installed on the, uh, on the layout. Definitely a, a better, more controlled delivery of power almost there. Well, I think that's pretty good. 9.3 miles per hour. So that's uh, excellent, I think, for a model of that age. And I don't think they were really designed for this. So we'll just get this uh, into the sidings and then we'll uh, see if we can have a look at the uh, the diesel shunter so in we go we'll just roll up alongside the station here slight stutter there wasn't there you can see everything jump for a moment and a gentle stop so here is the uh, the dodgy old um, diesel shunter I use for testing the track and uh, track cleaning. Been been using it for years, it's missing loads of its steps. I think we only just saw it in, in action just a couple of weeks ago. But um, we'll, we'll see this one running in, in a few moments. Uh, so this, this is a much nicer example. Box is a little bit uh, torn on one corner. R152, 060 diesel shunter, BR livery with magnet adhesion. So I'm thinking probably uh, late 60s, early 70s in, in this packaging. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get this fully out of the box um, with, uh, with one hand. Let's, uh, let's see if we, how, we, how we do with it. There we go. Now it has had the, uh, the cellophane replaced. In fact, that isn't replaced. It's just a piece lying in there. It, it's quite, quite a thick piece of cellophane I found and, and just laid it, laid it in there. It didn't have any on it when it, when it came to me. Let's see if I can just slide that plastic tray out a little and see how, how we do with that. That sounds much worse than it really is. Excuse me while I use my other hand there. And there it is, in much nicer condition. Let's look at that. And she has all of her steps. And I think we can just pinch that out of there and, and have, a, have a look at it. There we go. And she's a far smoother runner than the one I'm using for track cleaning. And obviously got all, all of its steps. 
and have a look at the wheels. So, fair bit of running. It's not not pristine, but uh, it's certainly in in lovely condition. I'm just going to pop that down before I drop it because that would be uh, absolutely tragic. So we'll just get this on the rails and then we'll uh, back up and collect those coaches. There we go, I think we're all on there. Then we'll just uh, isolate that class 37, just behind that point there. And we'll uh, separate the coaches. We're gonna have to do a bit of work by hand here, I think, just to simplify things. There we go, and we'll just drag those forwards a little, I think, just so we don't unintentionally recouple. And again, we're using the clipper on the half wave and the high resistance. And there we have that. And then the, out through the points. I've got the super glue there. I was just mending one of those green uh, on off switches. The little plastic bit on the metal arm had snapped off by itself and dropped into the switch and it, it stopped the, the thing from working. There we go, we're just beyond the points there. We'll close those. And then we're running the other way round this time for a reason. So th this speed is about what I think is comfortable, really. It's nowhere near a scale speed for the locomotive, I don't think. And uh, we'll, we'll time it when it comes back around, but this sort of feels comfortable and almost on the, probably the slower side of things that I ever run, as you know. It's not really my thing running at, at scale speed, I just enjoy running the trains. Again, you can hear quite a growl coming from that motor running on the half wave. So into the curve there. And I forgot to mention too, when I was looking back over this video that I'd shot, I'd uh, unintentionally picked up the phone and the video was shot at the wrong resolution. Again, I know I did that a couple of weeks ago. I must, I must stop doing it. But uh, so the video might be a little bit grainier than normal. So we're just coming round to the, uh, the measured eight foot section here, starting on the opposite direction. Now I've done this because one, I'm bringing the coaches out this way and I've got the locomotive facing this way, but I think she runs better in reverse, so we'll have a look. But this is a, a speed I think is comfortable and looks about right for the railway, for, for toy trains. So we'll, we'll see what we measure here. There we go, it's 25.4 miles per hour. So let's see what we, what we get next. So I'm able to run a, a great deal slower. The motor is a lot more cooperative when backing up with this model, as, as is often the case. Some of these models do run better in one direction than the other, and this is definitely the case with this little diesel, diesel shunter. And you can hear an awful lot of noise coming from the motor and the vibration down through the rails. Some of these rails aren't all pinned down so that they don't sit flat on the surface, so you get a little bit of vibration coming there. And you can hear the uh, creaky floorboards. And see, I'm just using the clipper, I'm using the crocodile clips to the back of it, just so we got it hooked into the circuit, really basic. So it's uh, looking like a pretty good time already. Hear that just vibration on the, on the rails there. Slight stutter there, wasn't there? She's thinking about it. And I'm pretty sure it's going to keep going. And there's those rails vibrating against the board again. it. 
6.3 miles per hour. So 65.94 seconds. And she's climbed over that point too at that speed. But uh, she really won't go over that diamond crossing at this speed. It uh, just comes to a stop each time. So this is the following morning. And overnight I thought I'd, I'd have a go with this um, little pannier tank. This is a Hornby Railways one from the mid 70s. It's a RO41 and it has the much finer flange wheels and it has a XO3 motor and a, a slightly different worm and gearing than that diesel shunter. And you can already see it is so much slower. There's a slightly different uh, chatter and sound coming coming from it than the, uh, the earlier diesel shunter, isn't there? And that really is right on the edge of what the motor's going to do there. I have had a number of goes at this, and I have had a number of stalls on the point work. Yeah, we're, we're going to do that. Just needs a strong, positive thought, he says, grinning. But I don't think you'd want to be running these models like this all the time. I don't think it, it's possibly very good for the motors. And for me personally, I, I do like to see them sort of run around the layout rather than crawl. But that time is uh, marching on, isn't it? One minute, 22 seconds and counting. There are those uh, noisy rails again. I must pin a few more, a few more of the sleepers down along that length, I think. I do want to take out the point that's behind them at the moment because it uh, it definitely needs a, the mechanism is not that reliable anymore. The, that centre point I was talking about earlier just keep popping out of it. I have to keep reassembling it in, in situ every now and again. The super glue doesn't last very long. I don't think it likes the plastics that are used. It's not doesn't make a good bond. But again, we're getting towards the end here. And again, I'd like to thank Mr. Snooze for his video and inspiring this, and uh, Model Railways Unlimited for coming up with the uh, original formula. And Mr. Snooze adapted it for the uh, eight foot length, and I'm uh, pinching it here to have a bit of fun here today. But still, we're, we're counting two minutes 33 there and, and still moving on. So it's just around about that last catenary mast, approximately, wasn't it? When we had the tape on the, on the rails there. There we go, 2.5 miles an hour, 165.57 seconds. And watch this, if she doesn't like that point. But thanks again for watching. I'm gonna leave you with the Bobo Electric and the Illuminated Coaches. If you look back again next time, we shall have something else to look at. Goodbye now.